Hey, Halloween! Halloween. It, it, Halloween. Big Clay wants some candy. And Mr. Pizza wants some candy too. It's Halloween. Beakley, come into the kitchen. I got something for you. Come in. Surprise! Happy one year anniversary, Beakley. Anniversary? Yeah, it's been a whole year since you came through my TV, and I thought we should celebrate. Oh, wow. And in doing so, I'm going to let you choose the spooky movies that we watched this month. Beakley, movie? Yep, any spooky movie you want. Okay, not too scary though. Not like bunny picnic. <sighs> I'm sorry I showed you that, Beakley. I didn't know you were afraid of rabbits. Damn it. Beakley not sleep for a week. Bunny scary. Okay, so what movie do you want to watch tonight? Beakley watch. That movie. This movie? Sure, we can do that. Good. Food? Of course. Good. Beakley live food. But before we get into any of that, Beakley, hey y'all, I'm Derek and welcome to Bad Movie Friday Night. And tonight we're looking at a classic 80s horror film, Critters. Critters is a movie from 1986 produced by New Line Cinemas. New Line, riding high off their success with the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, started looking for more and more horror films that could be made cheap and turn a quick profit, and found this script. Bringing the Kyoto Brothers in to craft the special effects and puppets, the movie was funded for $2 million and quickly brought in over six times its original budget, which of course led it to become the next franchise for New Line. And to go along with this movie, I've decided to make some falafel. Because they're cute little fried balls that look like the critters when they roll around. <sighs> yeah, I know, I'm a nerd. So, what we're going to do first is fill our food processor up with half a diced onion, one and a half teaspoons of flour, two teaspoons of cardamom, two teaspoons of cumin, salt, pepper, about six cloves of garlic, and a pound of chickpeas that I soaked overnight. Make sure you start with dried chickpeas and reconstitute them yourself. If you use canned, it's going to be too wet and too salty. So what we're going to do is just run this on high until we get a paste, making sure to scrape the sides every now and again. So let's get started. Our movie begins in space, specifically at a prison asteroid where a group of alien convicts called the Krikes have staged a jailbreak and have stolen a ship. The warden comes in, sees the mayhem, and calls for the bounty hunters. You know you're in for a treat when your movie starts off with alien criminals trying to make a break for it. Cut to middle of nowhere America, where all the alien invasions occur, and we meet the Brown family, the traditional nuclear family, and the son, Brad, is trying to get out of going to school by warming a thermometer with hot water. Now here's an interesting little tidbit. The mom in this movie, Dee Wallace, also played the mom in another movie about an alien, E.T., the extraterrestrial. And in both movies, she has a son who tries to trick her by leaving a thermometer underneath hot water. The only difference is, in this time, it doesn't work. Anyways, while all that goes on, we meet the sheriff, the deputy, the town drunk, and the bounty hunters, a couple of faceless creatures from outer space, who learn about Earth through the magic of a compact disc. And one of the bounty hunters takes the face of a rock star, because why be inconspicuous when you're an alien bounty hunter tracking down vicious creatures? You know, keeping a low profile is so overrated. Well, our chickpeas are finished processing, so we're just going to cover them and set them in the fridge for about two hours to let them firm up. And while that's going on, we're going to make a sauce to go with it. Zedziki. Well, I should say one of my legions of experts has already made it. So let's cut to that real quick and show you how it's done. Take it away, Dad! 
Hi all, I'm Dad. Uh, we're going to be preparing some tzatziki today, and we're doing it at my house because uh, every time I go over to Derek's house, I turn into a plot point, and this is a little more recipe than a plot point can handle. So let's get to work. Today we're going to be preparing some tzatziki. It's a dish we learned to make and I learned to love when I was stationed in Greece back in the 80s. We lived on the island of Crete, so this will be the southern version of the dish, which has some slight variations to the northern area of Greece, but uh, hey, it's all good. First you start with a number of cucumbers. I'm going to take, trim the ends and peel them. Now take that and then we are going to slice it in half. Then we are going to find a scraper and we're going to clean out the seeds. Now why do you clean out the seeds? Well, one of the odd things about this is it's a wet dish that you want to get as dry as possible. Then we take get a grater. Shred it, making the pieces as long as we can as possible. And doing our very best to avoid scraping our knuckles in the process. Our Cuisinart makes this significantly easier, but this is the traditional method. To dry these bad boys out, the traditional method would be to use a cloth rag, but for the sake of being Americans and the fact that uh, Amazon sent me what I asked for and not what I meant, so I've got two closets full of paper towels right now. And if I ever want to hang up my clothes again, I've got to get rid of some of them. So <laughs> we find a plate, or I find a pizza pan is a very good way to lay your cucumber out on a base of paper towels. Put another one over the top and squeeze. To optimize the de the demoisturization, put it out, lay them all out, not as thin as you can on the pizza pan. Take another pizza pan and sit it on top. Put a weight on it and sit it aside for anywhere from 30 minutes to overnight, depending on how much time you have. Now I have, as I said, already processed about a dozen. See, they're really nice and dry. Everything has come out really good. So that's the first step. The baseline part of tzatziki is yogurt, Greek yogurt. Once again, you've got a wet dish, you want to get as dry as possible. This is just Greek yogurt, which, trust me, didn't used to be as available as it is now. When we first started making this upon returning to America, this was a process, just to get all the moisture out of American yogurt. Greek yogurt has been strained and drained. In fact, I still take a number of coffee uh, filters, line the inside of a colander, pour my yogurt in it, and allow it to sit for a period of time. This yogurt has been sitting for roughly two hours and is just about right. You can let it sit in a cool, in the refrigerator, couple of hours to half a day if need be. That should get all the extra moisture out of it. And this is where the recipe gets a little bit on the Kentucky windage side of the house. You're never going to use more than two tablespoons, but my wife always says one good glug to start. So I've got some extra virgin olive oil and I give it one good Always remember, you can add more, you can't take it out. Then we're going to need lemon. of most controversy, garlic. I have taken 10 cloves of garlic and crushed them with a regular old-style, old-fashioned garlic press. 
The amount of garlic you put in basically depends on your constitution and the audience that you're preparing for. Now, we start mixing in the cucumbers. This is something that you really have to judge by the texture. What you want is something that is not overly clumpy, but has a certain thickness to it. And in essence, that's your creation. And that is how you make tzatziki. I hope you enjoyed my little display, and uh, I'll be seeing you somewhere. Hopefully, once again, it'll be in a mortal look. Thanks a lot, Dad. Now let's get back to the movie. Now Brad's sister comes home with her boyfriend, and the town drunk shoots her with a slingshot. Brad takes the blame and is sent to bed without dinner, and the girl and her boyfriend go out for a roll in the hay. Meanwhile, the Krikes land in the middle of the field, and the dad and Brad go to see what happened. Luckily, they completely did not look left, otherwise they would have seen a giant spaceship. Hey Beakley, you're not related to the Krikes, are you? Beakley, real! Krikes in movie! Beakley, real! And you don't think everything is food, right? You don't eat everything. No! Food is what Derek cooked! Derek is not food! Derek is best friend! Beakley don't eat best friend! That's surprisingly reassuring. Okay, so the deputy is on his rounds when he comes across something rolling across the road, which startles him into crashing. He investigates the situation, and that ends up about as well as you think it does. At the same time, Mom is trying to clean dishes, and then we see... Actually, that's kind of really creepy. And Dad tries to call the police, but the phone has been cut and the power goes out. The family goes down into the storm cellar to check the line, and this is when we see a critter for the first time. And now it's time for the fun to really begin. But first, let's form our falafel. All we're going to do is take about a pinch, around about two ounces worth, and then form them into a ball. and then set it off to the side for frying. So, what's going on with the bounty hunters? Well, they're going around town and blowing stuff up. Meanwhile, the critters attack the girl and eat her boyfriend. Brad saves her with a firecracker. <laughs> Still one of the best scenes in cinema. And the family tries to make a run for the car, but the critters have destroyed the engines. This is actually awesome because it shows the critters aren't just mindless eating machines, but actual hunters, cutting off any means of escape for their prey. The family falls back, but they get locked out of their house. Brad runs onto the roof and breaks in, just in time to save the family from being eaten. and the family holds up in the living room. So let's fry these guys up. Now that we got our oil hot, all we're gonna do is drop them in and let them fry until they're golden brown. Well, the Krikes break in and the family fights back, but soon realize there's too much to handle. So Brad decides to try to make a run for it. As he makes for help, he runs into the bounty hunters. Thank you, Deus Ex Machina. And he gets them to come over and kick some butt. So while they go clean house, let's warm some pita. All I did was lightly coat this griddle with a little bit of olive oil. And then we're just gonna warm through the pitas until they become soft and start to puff. All right. So the bounty hunters show up and start kicking some critters' tail. When it seems like they've killed them all, we find out there's one giant one left, and he kidnaps Brad's sister. Brad follows them into the ship and tries to free his sister. There's a little struggle, and the drunk, who ran into Brad in the woods, throws in a firecracker. As the ship takes off, the critters, in a fit of childish glee, blow up the farmhouse. And then, 
blow up themselves. As the bounty hunters leave, they pass Brad a little button, which in turn rebuilds the house in the best reverse shot available in 1985. And the family goes in, happy in the knowledge that everything is back to normal. Or is it? And the movie's done, and so is the falafel. What I do is I put it inside a pita with some romaine lettuce, and then cover that with the tzatziki sauce and a little bit of sriracha. So, final thoughts on the film. This movie is actually really great. It's a great send-up to classic alien invasion films of the 50s and 60s, but with good humor and genuinely chilling shots. It's paced well and pretty well acted and written very competently. Now, there is a lot of dark, and it can be difficult to see everything going on. But other than that, this movie is a lot of fun and a great way to ring in the Halloween season. It's a great creature feature with great practical effects and is great to share with friends. So gather up your favorite aliens, make some really good food, and enjoy this movie. Okay, here you go, man. Okay, so let's watch this movie, okay? Okay. I think you've been hanging out with me too much. Could be. Yeah. Well, y'all, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. And come back for some more Bad Movie Fry Night. Yeah. Silly movie. Too good. Hey, hey.